Tell me what you see here. Seriously, look with your own eyes. When I tell you that this team has some serious problems, I really mean it. It's becoming more and more obvious. I show you things that other people won't. What the heck was Teron Armstead even thinking here? He never even laid a hand on the Ravens defender. I don't care if he thought it was offsides. If you don't hear a whistle, you keep playing. Your one job is to protect Tua Tungavailoa. This single play could have had a catastrophic outcome for the Miami Dolphins. Oh, and by the way, watch Tua's head. As I've said all along, jujitsu can't help you when you're not in control of your own body. But now, it's not just me. Even the local sports media that have shielded the Dolphins all year are now seeing mistakes and are sounding the alarm. People are beginning to talk. The murmur is out there. Something's really wrong with this team. And it's not from the normal people like myself, or I know people get pissed off at the guy named TD. It's not just us. Now the, now the local media is beginning to go, hmm, something don't make sense here. Shit ain't, shit ain't right, man. I'm not really sure what's going on. Let me talk to you about the local media here in South Florida. So everybody knows who Barry Jackson is. And Barry Jackson is the local beat reporter here in South Florida who's been covering the Miami Dolphins and Miami Heat for seemingly ever. Here's a tweet that he put out. And just like I put out a warning, hey, this isn't for the faint of heart. This isn't for the weak. This is what he said. All right, new, a look at how the Bills have gotten the better of the Dolphins uh, and personnel in 10 specific areas. A bunch of those 10 better change on Sunday. It better change on Sunday for the Miami Dolphins to win the division. Then he puts a warning, a disclaimer on his tweet. Do not look at this if you're feeling queasy. Basically telling the two in ears, hey, hey, hey. Don't even look and get pissed off because I'm about to drop some science on you. And Barry Jackson never does that. He never says, look away, avert your eyes. You may not want to see this. So because it is behind a paywall, let me go ahead and be the one to bring it to you. And here is the actual article. So let me get back to the top as I have highlighted many, many things in this article that could make you probably regurgitate your dinner if you haven't, you know, digested things yet. So here's what he wrote. He says, a look at how Bills have beaten the Dolphins personnel and 10 things that must change on Sunday. And I agree with every single one. So let's get down to the first one. Josh Allen's dominance of the Dolphins. As much as people talk crap about Josh Allen, which they do. He's nine and two against Miami with a ridiculous 31 to five touchdown pass to interception ratio. His 110 career passing rating against the Miami is his second best among the 23 teams that he has played more than once. He's at 123 against the Rams. His past four games against Miami have been sublime. 13 TDs, two interceptions, and passing totals of 400, 304, 352 and 320 in his four last four games in Miami. Those 320 yards came with a 21 for 25 accuracy, four touchdowns, perfect 158.3 rating in Buffalo's 48 to 20 shellacking of Miami on October 1st. Hmm. What other quarterback just shellacked the Miami Dolphins and had a perfect 158.3 rating? That would be Lamar Jackson. So the two best quarterbacks that Miami has faced this year have completely torched Vic Fangio's defense, completely obliterated, perfect passer rating, perfect. As a runner, Allen has rushed 70 times and averaged 8.2 yards per carry. Let me put that in a little perspective as Devon Achan has been crushing it out there and he had a hundred and something yards against the Ravens, he only averaged 7.9. Josh Allen is averaging more yards per rush than our best running back that was available last week. 
his highest rushing average against any of the 23 teams that he has faced more than once. That includes five TDs rushing. So Allen is responsible for 36 TDs and five interceptions against Miami and a 8.2 yards per carry. Do, do you see that being a problem? <laughs> you understand why Barry's bringing this up after just watching the beatdown with Baltimore? Yeah, but let's continue. Next, and this is number two. The Bills and Allen's ability to consistency consistently exploit Dolphins inside linebackers in the passing game. And those were the good linebackers. Now you're down to, yeah, David Long is there, but you got Duke Riley in there, and, and we saw what happened to him last week. This has been a recurring nightmare with Buffalo torching Miami by isolating running backs, tight ends, and receivers against Dolphins linebackers. Hmm. Tight ends. They've got two. Austin Knox and uh, what's the other guy's name? Kincaid. Unbelievable tight ends, just like Baltimore had with Isaiah Likely. They're coming to town. In those four games, the Bills have had a 149.6 passer rating, 34 for 40, 390 yards, five TDs, no interceptions when targeting Miami's inside linebackers. David Long, Dick Riley, Jerome Baker, and Landon Roberts, who wasn't brought back. We understand that Jerome Baker may be coming back pretty soon, possibly this weekend. But in any event, they've been getting torched. Allen completed all four targets against Long, David Long, for 90 yards and a TD in the October 1 blowout. How are you going to fix that? Mike, what are you going to do? You're going to move out the linebacker and put in a defensive back instead? I don't know what you're going to do. Whether defensive coordinator Vic Fangio allows Jalen Ramsey to shadow Stefan Diggs or not, Ramsey must play better against Buffalo. Ramsey allowed two short, shut, short touchdown passes, one yard to Stefan Diggs and four yards to Lee Smith when Allen targeted him in the 2020 game. So much for being a shutdown corner. In the Rams-Bills NFL opener last season, Allen hit Gabe Davis on a 26-yard TD against Ramsey to open the scoring and then hit Diggs on a 53-yard pass over the top of Ramsey later in the game. He puts that in there because everyone is like, hey, Ramsey, and put him on Diggs. And Vic Fiend is like, I'm not going to let you shadow, guys, and especially Stefan Diggs because Stefan Diggs is eating you alive, which is only going to compound things because there's no Xavier Howard. So what do you do? Okay. Overall, in that 2022 NFL opening game, Ramsey allowed five of six passes thrown by Allen in Ramsey's coverage area to be caught for 103 yards and two touchdowns. It's even more critical that Ramsey be, be on his best behavior this coming Sunday. This is from a Miami Dolphins reporter. This, this funeral dirge that you're hearing here isn't from a Bills reporter telling everyone, hey, listen, what the Bills are going to do to you. This is from a Miami Dolphins beat reporter who loves the Miami Dolphins. Hater Kohu has struggled badly against Buffalo. That's an understatement. The Bills made sure Kohu was on Diggs for much of the October 1st game, and Diggs caught four or five targets for 101 yards and two touchdowns against Cater Kohu that day. Ouch. Fangio must decide, you know, basically the lesser of two evils, whether to give Kohu another chance, use Ramsey, or use Eli Applepie, who allowed 74 yards of four completions, including a TD to Davis, when playing for Cincinnati against Buffalo in a divisional playoff game last January. Whew. Man, it's even hard to read. In his four career games against the Bills, Kohu, Kohu has allowed a 136 passer rating in his coverage area, 22 catches out of 31 targets for 316 yards and three TDs and no interceptions. For the first time, Apple played ahead of Kohu last Sunday when Miami used two cornerbacks instead of three after Xavier Howard exited with a foot injury that's likely to sideline him Sunday. But Fangio has shown no inclination to replace Kohu with Nick Deedham as the nickel corner. Why? I can't tell you. I don't know if Vic Fangio has favorites. I don't know what he's seeing in, pat in uh, practice. I don't know if Cam Smith is just, oh my God, terrible. I don't know. All right. Diggs and Davis haunting Miami. Diggs has seven TDs and 15 career games against Miami, tied for the second highest total against any team in the league. 
He's averaged 13.7 yards on his 46 career catches against Miami, which is fifth highest among the 28 teams that Diggs has faced more than once. Diggs had 114 yards in the January playoff game against Miami and 120 in the October 21 route. Are you seeing this? Are you guys actually understanding? I know a lot of you guys love stats. Well, Barry Jackson is out here just tossing some stats out that I don't think a lot of people have ever dug into. Meanwhile, Davis, Gabe Davis on the other side, has averaged an absurd 17.4 yards on 17 catches and four touchdowns against Miami. He has had success historically against Ramsey and Apple. I'm afraid. I, I read this article and I'm like, I'm actually afraid. I, I, I'm, I'm terrified that we may see another blowout after reading this. I didn't know all this myself. Uh, now he's going to go into Tua. Tua struggles against Buffalo. Though he played well in the December game in Buffalo last year, Tua is just 1-5 against the Bills with 5 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, and a 79.6 passer rating. Against teams that he has faced more than once, this is really important, against teams that he's faced more than once, Tua's passer rating is worse only against Tennessee. And we know what happened with Tennessee. Now he's going to talk about the backup offensive linemen struggling against the Bills' pass rushers. I told you this is brutal. Liam Eikenberg must play much better than he did in his NFL debut at center against Buffalo on October 1st. Eikenberg yielded two sacks and five pressures in that game and allowed a sack to Buffalo when playing guard last season. Guard Lester Cotton, who, who might be needed Sunday, yielded a sack and four pressures in a playoff game last January in Buffalo. And then he's talking about their edge rusher, um, Greg Russo, the former Miami Hurricane standout has three and a half sacks against the Buffalo against the Dolphins in four games, including two in the October 1st matchup. Miami has yielded four sacks in each of its last two games against Buffalo. Four sacks. Okay. I'm not running out of breath. There's just so much to handle here. Doing a better job against the Bills' safety tandem of Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, each of whom has made a Pro Bowl. So they've got two Pro Bowl quality safeties. Poyer has three interceptions and eight passes defended against Miami. Hyde has two interceptions, a TD, and a fumble recovery against the Dolphins. Playing better offensively in primetime games. This one just blew me away. In night games under Mike McDaniel, the Dolphins scored 15 in Cincinnati. Tua left that game in the first half with a concussion, as you know. Then they scored 16 against Pittsburgh, 17 against the Chargers, 29 in Buffalo, 24 in New England, 10 against Philadelphia, and 20 against Tennessee. Miami had defensive TDs in the last two of those games. That's 18.7 points on seven night games. Where did you hear 18 points before? Very, very, very not too far away. Where did you hear somebody say, oh, it was me. It, it was me. It was me who said the Dolphins only score, only average 18 points a game against good teams. And this is not only good teams, but this is night games he's talking about as well. I, I, I couldn't believe it. So then he continues to finish this off. Another way of looking at this. Miami hasn't reached 30 points in any of seven primetime games, but has top 30 points in 14 of its other 27 games with McDaniel. The Dolphins might need 30 on Sunday night if Allen torments a depleted Dolphins defense. That is enough to just go, what the hell are we going to do? Can't score. Yeah, Jalen Waddle's not going to be there. Xavier Howard's not going to be there. These guys have been torching your defense. Baltimore just did the exact same thing. And I don't know how they fix this. I know there's a lot of shit talking on, on Twitter where people talk about the Buffalo Bills stinking and everything else. Where Barry Jackson, one of the most approved reporters here in South Florida, just laid out the case as to why there's a problem here. I don't, I don't know how any fan can go, oh my God, what the hell? I understand. People are fans. You, you got to support your team. You got to have faith. I don't want to make sure. I never want to tell people not to have their faith and their loyalty and their fandom. 
But at, on this show, I try to bring a dose of reality and say, hey, listen, here's what you need to look for. Here's what the problems are with the Miami Dolphins. Here's what the problems are with different parts of the team. So when you're watching the game on Sunday, you're going like, oh, I remember Barry said this. I remember Eric Jackson said this. I remember XYZ person said it. And you understand that just don't sit there and clap like a seal and raise the pom-poms when you can actually understand there's some problems here. So I want to do one more story before I uh, start taking comments. Um, this one, let's see, where, where is it here? Uh, let me see if I can find it. All right, so <laughs> Adam Beasley, uh, who's another reporter, he's, he had tweeted this um, before New Year's Eve, I, I mean Christmas Eve. He said the Dolphins defense has, no, it was, it was New Year's Eve. The uh, Dolphins defense has allowed 117 points in the eight games since J Jalen Ramsey has played. But sure, they're going to allow 42 on Sunday. So Keyshawn Johnson had said, as well as Skip Bayless, that Miami's going to get blown out. They're, they're going to give up 40 points plus to the Baltimore Ravens. And Adam Beasley said, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, man. You don't know what you're talking about. Keyshawn, I know you know you were a pro receiver. I know you got some inside info, but you know, just shut up. We've only given up 117 points. So I, I sent this to Adam Beasley. I'm like, has anyone checked on? You've apologized at all? And so what he did, he came right back to me and said, thanks for reading. And he sent this article to me. I was like, stand up guy. Let me see what you have to say because you sounded cocky as hell. And Adam, if you just want to see his cred, he's a senior NFL reporter, director of 10 pro events for Pro Football Network, Miami Herald alum. Okay. Worked with uh, Ryan Pitt, Fitz, Fitzpatrick. So I'm, I'm expecting when I get this link that this guy's wrote something completely flowery that it just says, don't worry about it. Everything is going to rebound. Everything is going to be fine. Boom. <laughs> sort of like I said, right? There's only one way forward for the Miami Dolphins. One, one singular way forward. After the Miami Dolphins defense failed to deliver against the Baltimore Ravens, it's all on Tua to carry the team the rest of the way. And I, I've seen comments from people, no, it's just one guy. It can't just be on Tua's shoulder. Barry, you said that Tua had to have a moment like Michael Jordan during the flu game. And you said he had to be like Kobe and score 81. And you had to be like Joe Montana to Dwight Clark and Tom Brady and blah, 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 blah. And, and, and you know, it's not fair. This is another South Florida beat reporter who's like, hey man, it's time. It, it's time for the left arm of God to show he's the left arm of little G God. Because everybody is beginning to see this now. I was shocked when he gave this to me. So this was his, his tweet when he was, you know, bitching at, um, whatchamacallit, Keyshawn Johnson. And it says, the Miami Dolphins proved Sunday, defense proved, that they cannot be counted upon to win the biggest games for this team. Not after 56 points, 491 yards, and 24 first downs that they allowed in the Sunday beatdown. The Dolphins' defense is built around pass rush and coverage. Sunday's double whammy weakened both significantly. So there will be a drop-off. Won't be that much of a pass rush. I just don't see it happening. And a potentially significant one from the Dolphins' defense at the season's most important time. Which means the offense in general, and Tua Tungvaluwa in particular, need to step up. And I'm sitting here reading this stuff from Barry Jackson and here Adam Beasley go, oh my God, how did these guys all of a sudden start echoing what I've been saying for months? You guys who have watched my stuff know I've been saying this for months. People have been bitching at me, flaming me, disliking video. Barry, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you, you, you have no idea. This team is doing great. And now all of a sudden you got people ringing the bell going, oh shit, oh shit, what the hell do we do? Tua Tungvaluwa must carry the Miami Dolphins. Tua wasn't nearly good enough Sunday. His completion percentage of 57.9 yards per attempt, 6.2, and passer rating 71.9 were all well off his season average. Duh, wonder why. He played a good team. His two, pa his two bad picks didn't, <laughs> didn't alone lose the game, but they also certainly didn't help. With Jalen Watt, I love this sentence. Check out this dig. With Jalen Waddle unable to play, 
and Tyreek Hill apparently unable to play well. Whew. Sunday was a disaster. The Miami media has had it. Has had it. No more excuses. What the hell are you guys doing out there? Um, and, and he goes, sore shoulder or not, don't want to hear the excuse. That level of play can't continue for Tua or the Dolphins won't win another game. Not me. Here's another guy saying it. It ain't gonna happen. You either gotta come out there and ball out and be Brady and and all you know Joe Montana and Kobe with two to two down by down by one with two to go and play the Michael Jordan game, the flu game. You uh, have to be that man. <laughs> to acknowledge post game that the Dolphins pressed. No, the Dolphins didn't press. Too oppressed when things got tough. Quote, that's exactly what we didn't need to do. We didn't need to press. And I say we as in me. So why didn't you just say me? What why did you talk in the third person? Person. Should have said, I did exactly what I didn't need to do. I didn't need to press. Own up. Take it. Take responsibility. I didn't need to press and force throws down the field that weren't there with certain looks. I should have taken the checkdowns. Yeah, I've got to be better. We're talking about an NFL quarterback who has already played, what, 16 games of this season, who is now saying in public, yeah, I should have done that. I got to do better. What? What? <laughs> it's the Dolphins hope in an increasingly bleak lip to the finish. <laughs> Miami has a decision to make this offseason. Off How much to offer to a long term? That decision still might be pending in how this final stretch pay, plays out. All right, so I'm going to take some comments, but you've just seen two of Miami's top reporters who cover the team. And right now they are setting up a flare and they're saying straight up, this shit is broken. There is something wrong. We can't pay two of this kind of money. He's not the guy right now. He's still looking to see what he needs to do. Sound familiar? Sound like somebody who's been saying it for months when other people were throwing darts at me for saying it? Barry, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you're a, a, you're a hater. You're a hater. You got hater aid. And now what do you say about Adam Beasley and Barry Jackson and others who are starting to see it and they see it come to fruition and they, and they saw it themselves? I'm just telling you, you go on his show. Hey, something you can't look away from, can't avert your eyes. People are seeing it front and center. Oh, but Barry, he's thrown for 4,800 yards and, you know, he's the number one passer in the league and blah, 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 blah. Bullshit. You got to win. <laughs> you got to win. You cannot throw for all these yards against crappy teams that ain't get your ass reamed. By, by the good teams. Is anybody catching on to this Barry guy? 